Hello and welcome to our show, Lead Me Home. I am Mary Beth Maestri. Perseverance, what does it mean? Are you a person that perseveres? Think about it in your own life. A simple de definition means not giving up, having the effort required to do something and to do it till the very end, even if it's very hard. Let's li listen to Romans 12.12 12 tell us about perseverance. Perseverance is vital to growing in your faith. And God wants his people to persevere, no matter what happens. So we have to learn to overcome obstacles, difficulties, trials, and tribulations to experience victory in Christ. So my next guest, I feel, demonstrates this wonderful quality, I call it a virtue, the virtue of perseverance. And it seems to be a quality we, we don't seem to find in our younger generation. And I'm beginning to wonder whose fault that is. Is it theirs? Or maybe it is ours. Or are we one of those that said, well, I had it hard, so I don't want my child to have it hard. And we do all that we can to give them everything for them not to have the hardship that we may have had. So maybe those of you listening out there, we may be guilty of some of it. But teach our children, let us now go back to that generation and teach them that it's nothing wrong in persevering to get what they want, but more than that, to get the victory of Christ. Let me now introduce my guest, Cecilia Thompson. Hi, Cecilia. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to be here, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about my journey to Christ. Your journey to Christ. Thank mm -hmm. you for being here with us, Cecilia. And I, like I told you earlier, as I looked, reviewed your story, I see a lot of perseverance in it. And I, get, I think I'm even going to see where it comes from originally. Okay. So let's get started. Let's go through your history, where you were born, parents, kids, schools you went to, that sort of thing. And through it all, what your faith was like. Okay. 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 Um, I'm the daughter of Ophelia Thompson and Raphael Thompson. I was originally born in Cayo District, Santa Elena, I mean Esperanza Village. Um, I spent 16 years of my life there. I went to... In Pride, Esperanza. Uh, in Cayo District, Cayo, Santa Cayo. Elena. Mm -hmm. I, um, I went to... Santa, that, that time was in Ignatius Primary School, but in Santa Elena, uh -huh. Santa Elena, which is the twin town of Kai, San Ignacio. And um, from there, I went to, we were seven children, and I'm the fourth. Mm -hmm. We were four boys and three girls. Okay. One is deceased now, so we are six. And then I attended Sacred Heart for two years. Mm -hmm. After that, well, there was no sixth form in at the Cayo district at that time, so the whole family transferred to Belize City because my sister was already graduated from high school and my brother was already graduated and they wanted to further their education. Yes, before we go as far as that, let's go back a little bit. Okay. So you did um, elementary school mm -hmm. in, in Santa Elena. Yes. Okay. And um, now your parents, you mentioned maybe nominal Catholics, uh -huh. but you all, all of you received the sacraments, huh? Yeah. Because you were going to a Catholic uh, primary school. Yes, that's and then true. you said you moved on to Sacred Heart. Mm -hmm. But again, let's, let's, because I'm on that theme of perseverance. Okay. Now you are going to, you live in Santa Elena. Mm -hmm. So to get to Sacred Heart, okay. you have to what? Yes, we have to walk far because at that time, it's the Huxford Bridge that, was, that had to be used. There was not a shark, cut that uh -huh. wooden bridge. Uh -huh. So we were poor and um, I don't recall us even having a school bag. We used to back our books in our yes. hands uh -huh. and we had to walk rain or shine. We didn't even have an umbrella. I 
don't recall us getting money for lunch and that time school was like from 7 30 to about 2 2 30 in the evening and that was very painful because you used to see kids um, eating with, with their lunch and, uh-huh, having mm-hmm. their lunch having their snacks and we didn't get to have those things but then the, the it's the sun you know the blistering sun, sun. and but to go and, and coming back but, you're coming back um, at 233 yeah but i so. think um, kids are resilient and because we were we were young and we were poor those things didn't really at that time didn't matter but not i look back in retrospect yes i think um, yeah those I don't know if it if it was in this era that I was growing. Would I have had that um, determination that that perseverance that you are talking about to go through it? I ho- I'm hoping so. That you know? never. <laughs> yes. Maybe not. Maybe not. You just yeah. never know. It was just I think a generation because mm-hmm. not only that, but on the way going probably and coming, there were other kids walking. Yeah. See, lots of kids now uh-huh, go to uh-huh. school in cars. That's true. Here in Belize At City, time, maybe yeah. not in the other districts, mm-hmm. but. Um, but so many kids are walking to school. But more than that, like you said, carrying those books and then getting there and no lunch mm-hmm. and watching mm-hmm. other Getting children. up early. Too. Because prob- some of the mm-hmm. schools here now have um, uh, feeding programs. Mm-hmm. And probably at that time there wasn't any. No, no. You know, the, the, in, no, in those, those things. days, right. You uh-huh. got to for yourself but those, <laughs> in those yes, days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so and that I guess was many it. people went hungry, just like yeah. some of us had. You know, sometimes we didn't just did till you got home. Mm-hmm. But go back. Let's go back to your to your father. What? Okay. Tell me about your father. He was he was a farmer. My father has always was always a farmer, and he, I think he chose that way of living because um, well he could not read and write, and he didn't like to be amongst people because my father had a very a temperament of very being. Um, passionate and really getting upset about when things clashed with his way of seeing things, uh you know. So he always was in at the farm. And um, my mother was the one that actually took care of us at the farm. And um, my father, well, because we lived prior to um, growing up in Santa Elena, I have to go back a little bit in time Mm -hmm. in terms that we actually grew up in Crystal Ray, a village. And um, there, my, my father always wanted us to have the highest level of education because he said that he would, he never wanted any of his children not to you know to read and to write because that was his biggest um, regret in life. Because yes, he when you don't know to read and write, he said everybody takes advantage of you, and that is where his bitterness used to come, come from. from uh, because he was an extremely kind person, a very fair person. But when people took advantage of him, that really got him angry. Okay, just one second, viewers. I want you to see where some of the perseverance started. Right there, seeing it from her father, who was illiterate, couldn't read nor write. But, but on the other hand, what I spoke of earlier, he wanted you all to persevere and to get that education mm-hmm. so that you wouldn't end up in his predicament of not being able to deal with, with affairs but when he couldn't, yeah. I would imagine, monetary affairs when mm-hmm. they would take advantage yeah. of that. And I think all farmers have to persevere because he went through many ups and downs with his crops. A lot of death in the cattle and uh, Crystal Ray tends to be a, a, a very barren village with regards to water. So a lot of times his crops used to die. Yeah. But even so, he used to plant and never gave up. And he used to bring us the food. Mm-hmm. He used to bring, when we were in Santa Elena living and he was still in Crystal Ray, he used to bring us the planting, the cow milk, the cheese, so that we could survive because at yes. that time nobody was working. Mm-hmm. That's where we used to live from. Going to school. Mm-hmm. So, and your mother was taking yeah, care of you. she was doing all the housework and seeing that we go to school, you know. Mm-hmm. But she was us. persevering in her own way. Yeah. So he was on the farm raising mm-hmm. the produce. Mm-hmm. She was at home raising seven children. Yeah. So she, like you said, was a disciplinarian. Huh? Mm-hmm. That's an understanding that they had. And I think when I look back to I think it's, it's a selflessness about them. Yes, because yes. my father had to do everything at the farm for himself, wash, cook, and That's make right. sure that he finds She should have had own. his wife with him yeah, in that sense. Uh-huh. And then she was over here, separate, trying to raise us up you know, the right way. Mm-hmm. So 
Parents are self-giving. Self-giving, you know? yes. And, you, and mm. so we see the per- perseverance in both your father mm-hmm. and your mother. mother yeah. huh? Okay, so you finished high school, and mm-hmm. this is when um, your older brothers and sisters had, of course, finished uh-huh. ahead of you. Uh-huh. So they wanted to fit further their education mm-hmm. in the city. Yeah? So let's go on from there. They were, so they, um, you moved now? Yeah, they are already in Belize City because my brother was working... Um, well, actually, when he was going to high school, on weekends, my brother used to work at the monastery, constructing that monastery with Father Richard, the Dominican minister in Santa Familia. Okay. So the little money that he used to get, like maybe $50 a month, he used to bring it to the home so that they can help to, for the expenses. But when he finished, and my sister, my older sister finished, she, they came to Belize City, and then she was working at a laboratory. It doesn't exist anymore. And my, fa- my brother was at the as a, tra- a traffic controller at the um, at the airport. And they used to work and send back money. Mm-hmm. But then my sister has always been a trailblazer. She <laughs> started this in my mother and in my father that we cannot stay at that level of education. Sure. That they, we, the whole family is supposed to come to Belize City. Oh my and, goodness. And was, she, is she the eldest? Yeah. was she the eldest? Was she the eldest? Okay. Uh-huh. And um, they always listened to her. And um, the whole family moved to to Belize City, yes. that has an experience, a culture shock. Yes. Because from a little village, a little, t- um, that time, little Santa village, Lena wasn't no to town. a little town, mm-hmm. to the big city. Yes. yes. So, um, but, but, but he didn't come right away. Your father doesn't come, huh? My father never came uh-huh. to live with Just us. Just He was uh-huh. always at the farm. Uh-huh. And um, I remember the ordeal of trying to get a house for rent. And um, at those times, houses were rent for two hundred dollars a month, and they are big. But for us, that was very expensive. Yes. You know, which I mean, all the kids. Yeah, yes. but thank God, well, with the salaries of those two persons, and then my father trying to pitch in and and um, trying to work in unity. That's something that they taught us. We mm-hmm. depend on each other to be there for each other. We. Um, we made it to the city and we found a place to stay and from there um, I enrolled in Palote High School. My sister enrolled in Palote High School. My other sister went to sixth form and my brother started um, technical high school. Okay. And so everybody is in school and everybody the other little is. ones went to St. Joseph, St. Joseph Primary School. So it's, um, life started to normalize in Belize City. Yes, you know? once you got through that, that yes. big hurdle, mm-hmm. but you persevered once again perseverance yeah. there with everyone chipping in so you're going to do six form mm-hmm. and then you're going to um also go on to ub yeah but you said tell me a little bit about um a summer job you took okay. at sca um that was like when i graduated from Palote high school i went to st john's and there i met a girl and we became good friends Two, two good friends, and then one of them was very close to Saint, to the to the Saint Catherine's convent. Mm-hmm. I think at that time she had an interest in studying in, in being a nun, a sister, okay. and she um, she told us about this summer job that they would have at Saint Catherine's, and um, at that time you want money. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you need to help. You need money, you know. But I was still in sixth form, so um, she brought us there, and um, I guess. Maybe they saw hardworkingness in the, in the three of us, and we used to, we used to. Um, they were having, they were having for that summer a delegation from the U.S. A delegation of sisters. They were celebrating something, and we were supposed to keep everything clean okay. and just be there, attentive, you know, to, that. to clean the kitchen and wash the dishes and make sure that everything looks spick and span, and to, you know, to be. Um, just to be there. To be yes. So who did you meet that influenced you in, in, in your faith, okay, in your um, walk? Of the many sisters that I met, because there were a lot then, that sure, more than now. Then, uh-huh. um, I did meet Sister Sarita and Sister Francine, because, because of the big delegation, the, the local sisters were with them. But one sister was extremely friendly, Sister Josella Stolf, tall sister. She looked like him. You know, to me, she was like an... At that time, I'm small and, oh, yes, you know, yes, kind of was, timid. And she was, to me, an angelic person, dressed in her white, your know, white regalia. And, and she liked to smile a lot yes. and hug and kiss a lot. It, she, she's over, a really friendly <laughs> woman. And it's in her family. Mm-hmm. I know the family. And that's yeah. how they are. She used to grab you and hug you very tightly. And I feel squashed. But I used to <laughs> like it because... My parents were never into, none of us kids and so were never into that intimacy, you know. So um, 
nice to feel like, you know, I'm more loved because sister likes to hug me. And then um, maybe she, she felt the same way about me. And then she, even though when we finished the, um, the term there of working, she used to say, come back and visit me. And I used to come every weekend. Uh -huh. If it wasn't Saturday, I was, to, I was, it was Sundays, come and spend. Sometimes whole afternoons, we didn't know where the time went. And my mother was never one to confine she never confined my hours, so mm -hmm. I just used to have to tell her where I'm going. going. And uh -huh. um, she would, she liked the sisters too, because when she... Yes, she was going to a good place and being with uh, the other kids on the street. She always there. tells us stories about the sisters that taught her. Mm -hmm. At that time, they were in Kayoto, mm -hmm. Sister Bernardes and those people. So um, I used to tell her how good sisters used to treat me and what all we used to do together. Mm -hmm. You know, she used to tell me about her life and I used to tell her how I was doing in school and what I wanted to be and... And she used to tell me, um, I think she's, maybe she saw some vocation in me. She used to say, I am going to pray for you until you become one of us. <laughs> <laughs> and I then used to answer her because at that time I was going to Paloti. So like you feel confused between both, you know. Palatine nuns and, or, or uh -huh. the mercy nuns, Yes, right. I used to stay quiet, you know. Mm -hmm. But I used to like being around her because she taught me to, well, my mother taught us to pray the rosary from very early. Mm -hmm. It was like at that time, it's like a sacrifice because late at night, at yes. nine, you want to be sleeping. Being, and yes, that kids. time, you have to kneel down uh -huh. and have to right pray. There. We are sleeping there, but my mother doesn't let us have. Sure. And up to now, she still prays on her knees. Yes. And my mother is old, like 80 years. So sister, we used to do that with sister. With sister Jessella. We prayed the rosary. Mm -hmm. And she used to ask me to go into the chapel and lift up my petitions. Okay. I guess she knew a lot of things to pray for. I didn't know what to pray for at that time. But I just, I was obedient. Yes, sure. I was obedient and go in and, and, and say something to God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe I was just praying more for school. You know, yes. that I, we, I finished just school. Get through. And, uh -huh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And um, that closeness, that bonding with sister was um, was something something unique. I don't know how many people find that to find a very close friend, friend that you can in, talk in to and you can be around with and feel so comfortable. Sometimes we are just sitting like how me and you, nothing uh -huh. saying. We're just enjoying the, the because St. Catherine's has a nice nice yes, grounds. Yes, the grounds so you see the, the um, trees and the squirrels and and we're just sitting back there in the um, and she would look at me and smile, and I smile back. <laughs> oh, sweet. No words at all. Words were not <laughs> necessary. Needed. Were yeah. not needed at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cecilia, we're going to stop there. Okay. And take a break. And when we come back, we'll continue on this story. Okay. But I like everything you said about the influence in her life with Sister uh, uh, Gisella. Gisella Stelf. Viewers will be right back. I worked in pro baseball for a long time, and we play on Sundays. And it was an easy excuse. I, I took the easy out and just didn't go to Mass. Got caught up on that whole selfishness, that whole, you know, um, I can do it all. The times when I was struggling were the times I needed God the most. And now that uh, I've come back and accepted God, my world has completely changed. If you've been away from the Catholic Church for any reason, visit catholicscomehome.org today. Welcome back. We continue now on Cecilia's story. And we left off where Cecilia, as a little part-time job, is going over, going to school at Palati, but going over to SCA to help uh, get ready for a, a delegation that's coming. But she be, she's befriends Sister Gisela. And for those of you, myself included, who knew Sister Gisela, Towards her last days, sure enough, you would see her up on that veranda. She was either knitting or embroidering or whatever else, play, praying her rosary, but always waving at us, whoever was passing by, recognizing us. It's just, it was just in her nature. She was a charming, lovely woman. So I can see definitely, Cecilia, how you could, <laughs> could, could be... Um, pulled into that, that attracted to what she had to offer. But it was not only that, it was teaching her in that loving, kind way, in that loving, kind, affectionate way, 
because Cecilia was saying, with a big family, and when you have to work so hard as parents, there's not much time for affection. So to come and receive a hug from a nun, that's so beautiful, huh? to know that you're loved and that you're accepted for who you are and that she's also praying for you. Definitely. De definitely had you in prayer. You mm -hmm. said she also took your times to Hattieville on oh, some yes. of her, her missions. Huh? Uh -huh. She used to go like I think once a month and she used to invite me because they had a little group of Catholics there and she used to like to wrap, especially around Christmas, lots of presents. Uh -huh. And then I think she used to get stuff from the States. So yes. I don't recall true. asking her where her stuff came from. We her. were always packing things in, box in baskets, some boxes that she would take. To give away. Uh -huh, to, to the give children. To the children. She used yeah. to tell me that a lot of disenfranchised children are in Hattieville. Uh -huh. And that was one of her spots that she used to go to to, to, do to share with them. So, and she invited you to go uh -huh. along. So, so beautiful. So her to, generosity uh -huh. there. Think it, yes. Maybe that is... That is why I find myself giving you know, Yeah, you saw it right you know, there, her generosity. Over. You don't, I don't, um, the moment you are doing things, you cannot, you're not, you won't see in the future. But in the future, now you trace back where certain values and certain virtues come, come from. About. And, and you I can take that, it back to one. someone. And, and mm -hmm. when you talk about it, yeah. then you begin to see it, yeah. like we're doing right now. Yeah. But um, so with your faith, you're going to Palotti. So now at Palotti, of course, that's going to encourage you to go to Mass, to do, because your Palotti, that's, we, mm -hmm. we know that's um, what they're teaching you there, mm -hmm. a, good, good, a good faith yeah. that you're um, grounded in. Mm -hmm. But now at six form, you, you're going to six form, because you did this as your little part-time job. Uh, your faith? What is your faith like in sixth form? Okay. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a student that is very intellectual and very um, smart. What? Education, I got it through hard work. I used to have to study. When my little sister grasped things very quickly, especially mathematics, I labored over my books and cried over mathematics. That was always a challenge for me. I, and I traced that back to like when I was growing up. Yeah, that teacher that used to beat us at those times, they used to oh. beat us if you got the problem wrong oh. or you couldn't understand it. And it's not because I, I didn't try. I yes. tried. Perseverance. Yes, I I'm tried. And they didn't care if you didn't, if you cannot grasp okay. it. The thing is that you got it wrong, so you were whipped okay. and punished. It. And I got a, a hit. Attitude towards, towards maths. it, yes. but it's in every part many, of school. Many other kids, you know, many other girls in, as well. In so, so every stage of um, of school, mathematics is there. So um, perseverance in sixth form was extremely needed, mm -hmm. you know, and studied hard. I remember, like my parents used to say, your only obligation is to study. You will go to school during the week, and as you come, it's homework. They didn't have to tell us that. On weekends, then we have to walk. Like mm -hmm. all the housework is there waiting for us. Um, the washing and the helping my mother cook because too many of us, you know, yes. and she got tired. So um, that's the only thing I remember at St. John's I was attracted to is that um, during lunch they used to um, put over the PA system that there would be mass, and I used to always go. And I think that's so, that's the upbringing that they gave us. You got to go to mass, you know. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday we had to go to mass. But this was daily mass. Mm -hmm. This wasn't even Sunday. Mm -hmm. This was daily oh, mass. Yes, that's when we week. had uh -huh. the mass. They had it mass at uh -huh. midday, yeah? uh -huh. and you could go at to for that. Dice Chapel. So we used, I used to go to that. I, I didn't used to miss those. Yes. And um, so that kept you going mm -hmm. for, for a bit. Now you're going to graduate there, and let's move on. Now you're going to okay. go work for a while. Uh huh. At I um, my work experience started actually at um, Angelo Press. I did three years there, mm -hmm. but um, at that time, um, <laughs> my um, my work there, I, there was a boy at Angelo Press and. I guess he was a ladies' man, I would say, and I'm innocent and young and I fell in love with him. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know he had another girlfriend. Okay. And I used to cry. Because I found out, because one day the girl called me and said, Leave my man alone. Oh my goodness. And that yes. frightened Heavy me because now yes. I'm imagining murder and all of these things, <laughs> you know. And I, um, I told my older sister, and she said, You are going to go back to school. Mm -hmm. She was like the second mother in my family, yes. and I was obedient. I went to UB. Mm -hmm. After three years, we left Angelus Press, and I went to, went to 
university. Mm -hmm. Got a bachelor's degree in business administration. Okay. From there, I moved on to Belmopan to work. I always, somehow, I always wanted to work with the government. All right. Uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh. And then I ended up in Belmopan. Before I ended up in Belmopan, I was commuting from Belize City to. Belmo Belmo Pan, but you had, I had to wake up very early. Yes. And when it's raining, you know, you have to walk in the morning. To the you, bus you, stop. You tend right. to get afraid because sometimes it's, like, it's during the, the equinox, yes. it's still dark. Uh -huh. So you get afraid walking to, to the bus station. And so I got a place to rent in Belmo Pan. And um, in Belmo Pan, it was like 8 to 12, 1 to 5 work. I liked the job. And um, again, when you are young and experimenting, um, we heard that they were recruiting for the Belize Defense Force volunteers, <laughs> and there were a bunch of us girls. Uh -huh. And we said, "They are good boys in the BDF. Oh we got to goodness, go." Yes. That was our motivation. motivation to go meet boys. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Which, when we um, we had to we had to do um, a practical exam and a written exam. And I never run like in five minutes a mile. I remember hmm, the guy that was testing us said when we reached because I had terrible pain because like, it was just too brutal. So, to, so to, new to you, uh -huh. yes, to your he body. Said, Don't drink water. And I, I, at that time I was sort of rebelling. Mm -hmm. I drank water and I started vomiting. Yes, he knew what he was telling you. <laughs> but we all passed and we became a part of him. As private soldiers, we got <laughs> uniform and boots and everything. We were told that we were supposed to um, to to do our drills twice for the week, and we always showed up. So this is after work. So uh -huh. you go to work. Mm -hmm. Work ends at five. We go straight and Fridays. over. Can you imagine this? This mm -hmm. slim little girl, young lady, sitting here in front of me. You can imagine <laughs> what she was at that age. Mm -hmm. But she enters the BDF uh -huh. as as uh, what recruited for BDF. Yes. And, and um, I used to come home weekends, but because um, practice sessions were on Wednesdays and Fridays, I had to stay down because the practice sessions went, went way up to 7 o'clock the night. By that time, no more bus. Yes. And okay. I used to sleep at the police training school. I asked that they give me a room because the girls used to come home, the oh, police the officers uh -huh. that were training also, and I used to sleep there by myself. And people used to say, you will hear ghosts and you will hear spirits <laughs> oh because goodness. people die in this place, but I never... Heart, oh, none no, of that. Just, just, yeah, but, so back to the boys. I never saw good boys in there. They were just so <laughs> so, so you so were rude looking for a potential and... husband. Well, it was never found. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you stuck. I come to once think again, of it. Perseverance. <laughs> How long did you do that? Okay, I, I did four years. Four years. Can you yeah. imagine that? Four years. She goes to work every day, and mm -hmm. twice a week she's gonna go to, to the um, mm -hmm. to the drill sessions. To, to the drill sessions. Uh -huh. And you keep this up for four years. Yes, and then every year in July we have to do annual camp. So we go to Bali Beacon in Pine Ridge or PG or Corozal, all over the country. But that should have been for two weeks. And the government used to pay us our salary still mm -hmm. as employees. And well, they are, they are, that's perseverance. Yeah. Because whilst I'm going through the brutality of being in the army, uh -huh. I used to say, I'm not coming back. But I think. Um, that's where community comes into effect uh -huh. because we all encourage each other. And it's like inside you have that competitive spirit yes. that you do not want to drop out and then they say you are weak. Mm -hmm. you're, but the BDF... Perseverance. Mm, that that's is what a I'm telling you. I've seen it. That teaches you. Uh -huh. It either breaks you or molds you into a tough individual. Mm -hmm. you, you, know, might, you might look... Outside, so, but inside, but inside you know it, it's, it's you, you are being changed and so molded. So you, you worked your way up, right up to yeah. second lieutenant. Was that I it? I had to do exams, mm -hmm. and um, I surprised myself because as we started as a cadet officer, you have to take written exam, and I passed. And you have to do a physical exam. I remember climbing the six foot wall, but then I was younger then. I was like sure. twenty six, and you have to leap over. And yeah. I, I was successful. The other girl, she sprained her foot, and oh, that was the end of her. She had to go home. Took had to, yeah. yeah, but um, I managed. And then you stay there two years, and they promote you to. So I was uh, in charge of the women in the in oh, the there volunteer. You go. So it paid. The, uh -huh. It paid off. You had you went yeah. up the ranks. Huh? So now you get a little bit more of respect. They're sure. not kicking you and cursing you and treating you <laughs> like a slave. 
Let's have to break your spirit to be obedient. Yes. You know, that's what they do yeah. in the military. I mean, so, we know, we know of that. My son, my son has experienced some of that. Uh-huh. I mean, the stories we've had to do. So yes, heard about what they do to you. That that place that okay. teaches you perseverance. So so we see the word perseverance come uh-huh. again. Huh? Okay, now you're gonna um, finish that, and you uh, you tell me about a, a pivotal point in your life was through government, working uh-huh. government. You got a chance to go to study a little further. There for a to, to the Holy Land to Israel. Yeah, just tell a little of they that. They were offering, and I think the um, the trait of education is very dominant in our family because mm-hmm. every one of us wants to keep excelling, excelling in our age, in our old age, and we are still, still, still moving learning. On. Yes, learning and learning, and I think that's that's life in general, learning whether in a classroom or, in or the, outside. Yeah, exactly. normal setting. So. Um, they were offering small and medium medium enterprises um, short courses that was like for six weeks and i got one and i went at that time i was working at the general at the value added tax department and i had an employer mrs barrow that um, that believes in education also and she she didn't have a problem with me going, going and yeah. i still getting my salary and i'm going to go on this experience you know sure. to the holy land and um there, well, you have to teach your courses and you have to write papers, but they asked you, um, like on weekends, they would take us on tours. So mm-hmm. we went to the Holocaust Museum, we went to Jerusalem, we went to Nazareth, we went to like um, the Via Dolorosa. Via Dolorosa. That's, that's, you, don't, mm. you can't imagine how that's the one on my bucket list. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it will happen maybe next year. We went to but, the Sea of Galilee and then we went to like to see how life is lived in a kibbutz yes. in Israel, and up you know, how they cooperate and how they plant and things like that. But um, traveling was was good and knowing about those places. But when it comes to the spiritual aspect of seeing and, and wondering and being in awe of God, this was the land that our Savior was born. This is the land that where he walked. He was actually with the disciples at the Sea of Galilee fishing and things like that. I, I you missed it. Yeah, I you, missed it. You weren't there now yet. Now I look back in retrospect, I said, I wish my faith was deep enough to have appreciated those things, you know. Uh-huh. Because you are just going, a lot of tourists, so are just going with the going crowd, with you know. That. Yes. And um, the teachers weren't into, like, it from had. a biblical point of yeah. view, they showing were, you. They, they just take you to the place and you, you see tourist, what you want to, to see, see, you know. Mm-hmm. It, sure. So it's okay. not like we were with an organized religious. <laughs> okay, we'll stop there. She missed her opportunity, she mm-hmm. says. Maybe mm-hmm. another time will come. Mm-hmm. But just the experience of going to Israel, to the Holy Land, to have to be able to have said that you walked in the Via Dolorosa, that the path of Jesus, we're coming to Lent, mm-hmm. where Jesus is going to walk that path right up to his crucifixion. And you walked in his footsteps. So whether you, you know what, whether you were aware of it or not, you mm-hmm. did it. Yeah. So you can look back and mm-hmm. say, okay, Lord, I did. I, I was in different parts of Nazareth, yeah. where you were born, Nazareth and Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And there was a the Sea of the Galilee. The thing is that now that I read the Bible, I can take my mind my back, back to, to those places. Yeah. Yes. So it was not in vain. Mm-hmm. She reading the Bible. I you learned can. backwards. I'm guessing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that's a good way of putting it. Learning backwards, right? Yeah. And we can all do that. We can learn backwards. It doesn't matter how we learn. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll stop there, viewers. Uh, when we come back, once again, we'll continue on her story. Okay. Be right Thank back. You. I worked in pro baseball for a long time, and we play on Sundays. And it was an easy excuse. I took the easy out and just didn't go to Mass. Got caught up on that whole selfishness, that whole, you know, um, I can do it all. The times when I was struggling were the times I needed God the most. And now that uh, I've come back and accepted God, my world has completely changed. If you've been away from the Catholic Church for any reason, visit catholicscomehome.org today. Welcome back. And isn't it amazing as we, as we go through Cecilia's story? And do you not see that thread of perseverance right through her story? Her faith might have 
waxed and waned along the way because with the BDF, you're not even going to church anymore, you said. No. Huh? But, uh, but then she gets the opportunity to go to the Holy Land even though she was not fully aware of, 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 of what she was experiencing. She does now. And so she can go back with those memories. But she's going to have another wonderful pivotal point. Because once again, through, um, through I don't know if it's through the ministry or through the Taiwanese embassy. Through the Taiwanese embassy. But it's an offer scholarship to the government of Belize. The scholarship. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh, to, sorry, uh -huh. to the government of Belize. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got a scholarship for two years to go do a master's degree in business administration in Taiwan. Sorry, two years? Uh -huh. Two years. Two uh -huh. years, yeah. That was a very grueling course because, well, master's degrees are a lot of Work. Oh, I used to work. see the sun come up <laughs> in the mornings. Still away studying, you mean? Uh -huh, lots of papers to write and exams to prepare for. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, a thesis to write. Never written a thesis because when I was going to UB, it was all exams, exams, exams. So yes, never it's a new learning experience, you know. But the um, the good part about Taiwan is to meet the people. Uh -huh. I think Taiwanese are a very gentle people. They are very hospitable, okay. and although they are a Buddhist country, they are open, mm -hmm. and especially to foreigners. And I think it's because they are so drawn to wanting to learn the English language. Uh -huh. For what reason, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because I could never learn there. I had to take a Mandarin um, classes in my program, of my uh -huh. two-year program, but it never stuck in my head. <laughs> but I found them more more able to learn English. Mm -hmm. They were so hungry for the practicing of English. Because they when they to, come this side of the world, mm, so much English is spoken. And so they, they used to go all out for me just to, to celebrate my birthday, to be with me so that we can practice every Taking in every English word, you said. I used to feel so appreciated by then that um, I think my other colleagues that, because um, there were other Belizeans studying in from Belize, uh -huh. but they were in um, farther in like maybe second year, mm -hmm. you know, and um, other foreigners that they said we are, also we are supposed to get together because we are foreigners. I used to want to be with the Taiwanese girls rather than with the you farm. laugh and you feel so free uh -huh. and in talking and um, they wanted to know what was Belize like, what was my culture like, what religion I, I practiced because they used to take me to their temples too and they used to take me to, to strange places. But interesting, I yeah, would imagine. Yeah, ex really weird because like they used to see everything that crawls, they eat there and they took me to this snake market where they pre <laughs> prepare the snakes and they make soups or they fry them whatever way you, you want, you know. Mm -hmm. So ex you're exposed to things that you can just marvel. No mm -hmm. criticism there, you know. Not at it. all, and, and it's but edible. It's just, they they eat it, yeah. and they're not sick. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it get, it's hard, huh? mm -hmm. and you you still find it with all those friends, it's still a form of loneliness. Oh yes, and um, it, um, you, do you turn to God at least a little bit? I, I used to go to um, to mass on Sundays. I still. You could, you could find train. a Catholic church? Yeah, uh -huh. I had to take the train, change two trains to get to Mass. Uh -huh. um, I got to, to go to that um, church because you had other Belizeans that I asked to show me. You know, they were already so familiar with Taiwan yes, yes. So, so fearless. Uh -huh. The first time I lost myself. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> I, I'm wondering how I'm going to, and the night is coming in. And um, um, I think they're not so used to foreigners that... Um, when they see people of color, they used to run away from me, and I used to feel more desperate. How oh, am I going to find my way back, back to the train station? Uh -huh. You know, and um, but it was a church that taught. It was um, bilingual, okay, in Mandarin, and in so I used to go to the English mass. Uh -huh. So I used to tell these girls about my faith. Uh -huh. They want to know about Jesus. So you and, would share. So you were doing a bit of evangelizing yeah, in right. English. Uh -huh. <laughs> and and like, um, that church was very active. Mm -hmm. And they used to do a lot of activities. And I joined their choir. Mm -hmm. And they used to put on shows. And I joined their shows. Okay. And on Sundays, they used to have like potlucks. And I used to stay back. And because it was a nice break from the, from the routine and the, and the grueling, yes. grueling uh -huh. someness of them. Um, Monday to Friday, hard school work. School, yeah. So, so yeah. that, but uh, that's where I, I picked up on her other, um, her other Bible verse, which was Philippians four thirteen. Two other of guests, uh, 
back also had this okay. as her strength. Carol Sear, if you remember, the American woman who was here helping um, at the, her and her group helping at Divine Mercy Church, she also picked this verse. In him who is a source of my strength, I have strength for okay. everything. Mm -hmm. So you needed some of that strength oh, yes. to get through Definitely. there. Huh? Okay, so um, you're back in Belize now. and I come back to my same job. So working in the taxation department, mm -hmm. I spent 25 years. I saw all the taxation systems come through, sales tax, value added tax, sales tax, then general sales tax. Okay. Um, 25 years of government service. I recently retired. <laughs> okay, but, but still, you, you say you come back and now this is where we're going to say, see Cecilia's mm. turning point. Okay. What happened? You, okay, you were um, going to St. Joseph's, you uh -huh, said? I, I, at the time, I lived close to St. Joseph, a stone threw away. Uh -huh. And St. Joseph at the time was um, advertising this trip, Christ Renews His Parish, Parish. Retreat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, oh, I, I want to see what this is all about. Sure. And, um, I went at that time, it was at um, St. Catherine's at the Guadalupe Spiritual Life Center. Uh -huh. And there, uh, they put us in groups. In my group was um, Zoila, Leticia Marin, myself, and um, another Zoila from Belama. And um, the little group, in those groups you become intimate because you sure. have to share your experiences. And I was, um, I was odd because hmm, people shared testimonies that, my goodness, you, you um, wonder, Goodness, how could they have gotten through those experiences? I don't remember what the tours, but I just know, man, they were difficult times for people, uh -huh. you know, for the women. There Perseverance that were, again, that were, all those women that persevered uh -huh. to go through. But I still see their happiness and their joy, and I wanted that, and their peacefulness. And then amongst your groups there, you are talking, they are talking what they are involved in. And then one thing that came up was that they were involved in this feeding program at the Battlefield Park. At the uh -huh. time was Central Park, and At, so they, on used, Albert Street. Mm -hmm, they were they used to go every Sunday to to, to give feed, breakfast, feed the poor, uh -huh, breakfast, and we used to line them up. And you say, only if we pray, then you can you can get your your food and your, your drink and your, and your <laughs> pray um, coffee. Pray first, food next. Yes. <laughs> Some didn't like that, but uh -huh. they still fall in and all sure. And we are singing. We took our books. So we used to sing hard. And they are there. Some were um, amenable to it. And mm -hmm. they tried to come along. And after that, we shared. Everything we did was out of our own expenses, out of our own um, wanting to give, you know, yes, uh -huh. to give back. And we did that for quite some time, mm -hmm. you know. But yes. after that, they were, I don't know what happened. It just it went into a dying you, what, mode, what happened? You know? it, that might die there mm -hmm. while something else picks up here. That's true. It's, it's you have your energies here or your money's here, mm -hmm. and then another project from the different churches. And this that is what is happens. so true because it just picks up and you know it just goes on to other at places. At that time, my sister was coming back also from Mexico. Mm -hmm. And she had specialized in anesthesiology, but she said while she was there, they had put her in the cancer, the oncology ward to work. Mm -hmm. And there she saw how cancer patients suffer. And then she started to wonder, cancer. Uh -huh. how, is my, how are my people doing back home? Because oh, there yeah, is cancer. cancer here, how sure. are they dealing with their pain? When she came back, she joined the Cancer Society. But the, that organization is more into education. So she said... Um, She's, we, she started to visit cancer patients. They gave her some names of people who had cancer, and she started to visit them at their homes. Mm -hmm. And she brought along my mother and myself, and this, some of the so same people in the group. See, there you go, you left that Leticia one. Leticia and Consuelo and Martinez. You're and, joining another group, right? And cool. then, as a doctor, she knew about all medicines, morphines, but at those time, they were not offering those here at the hospital. Yes. She started uh -huh. to lobby for those. Oh, wonderful. So that but you would attend, go, you would go with her, thing. visit with her. What we did uh -huh. in the homes of these people were, we like to sing and we like to pray. And this is all after work hours. I remember reaching home 9, 10 the night, tired. And then next day you have to go to work, but you are, you are happy you're inside. You're happy because you have, you know, you're seen. happy inside. If, if we learn Christ's way, it's mm -hmm. when we give yeah. that we receive the joy. When we're holding it on to our selfishness, so we, we're just true. looking around to see what else I can get. Uh -huh. You're thinking of the I, I, I. Mm -hmm. was when you start to look out and see them mm -hmm. that the joy comes back. God has promised that. Jesus yeah. has promised that. That's what we mean. What he means by the evangelizing That's that so we true. should be doing, uh, seeing the others and in need. Again, stories come 
come about because you find that you get so close to your patients that they will tell you, I wish that in my younger days I had read so, the Bible, I had gone to church, I had lived a more, a more not so wayward a life, life yes. you know, and um, but they are so um, embracing of you that, and you, are, you become so close to them. Yes, you a, say, don't look on the, on the things Let's, that we had We can now. start here. Give your heart Open your Bible God, now, yes. And you can do still for beliefs because you can be praying for us yes. who are trying uh -huh. and for the people uh, yeah. encouraging you, yeah. encouraging them. Okay, but and, once uh, again, let's go on with perseverance. Her education doesn't stop. She continues with yet another course. Tell us about that. Was it Limax? Um, that's. But I just wanted to say that even though that um, that apostolic work started in, in two thousand five, it's still ongoing. Yeah, you don't stop. Huh? And uh -huh. it became central because to for me to have enrolled in the in, in another master's program that was done by Sister Maggie and Father Tim, uh -huh. I had to have had a ministry. Mm -hmm. And this ministry was reaching out to the poor and to the sick and to the suffering and to the lonely. Okay. So that was the basis from which... Okay, let's, let's go to your ministry of vi vi reaching out to the mm -hmm. sick, the lonely, the, lonely, the cancer patients, patients, the suffering and the poor. And the poor. Uh -huh. yeah, that so, was the basis on which I had to um, ground my ministry when I did this... This, um, this particular Linux, course. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The, it was uh, actually a master's degree in pastoral studies, concentrating in our spirituality, how... We Master's ourselves. degree, let me just, so the viewers can understand it. Mm -hmm. Master's degree mm -hmm. in pastoral, pastoral studies. studies yeah. And you have it in all different areas, but your mm -hmm. speciality spirituality. was a, a spirituality uh -huh. reaching out yeah. to those in need. Yeah, and um, we looked at him. Spirituality in a broad context, it had to start with us, you know. How is my relationship with God, how am I serving him? And then taking it out to the community, embracing the community, cannot stop with me. And then grounding it with um, in relationship to Christ and to the neighbor. The it's, it's basically like we say, it's the uh -huh. cross. Huh? Mm -hmm. My relationship with Christ, yeah. then my relationship with others. Mm -hmm. It's the cross yeah. that, we, that we, we form. And in that, that way, it, it, it opened my eyes because like before I was very introspective and thinking that my holiness had to just stop with me and stop with me. But no, it has to be a giving as this you say. Stop, right? and, yeah. um, Took us through many uh, many roads, looking at the church at how it was at the time, looking at the, the lives of the saints, not to imitate them, but to see what was their end goal, mm -hmm. and that's the goal that I wanted to. But that sometimes I would still, still Christ, to imitate some of them, the good yeah, that they were doing, yeah. uh -huh. but not. Not imitate them in the sense that we will be flagging ourselves and oh, beating yes, ourselves yes, and things like that. Some of the extremes and, they and went really, through. Um, like, you know, feeling like if we commit a sin, really bringing down ourselves, but more in terms of embracing ourselves so that we can be whole, mm -hmm. so that we can take this wholeness to, 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 to others. To others and so. looking at scripture at the key role that it plays in our lives so that we can empower ourselves so that we can bring God's good message of love to to, to my patients and to in turn them to others who because we are all connected in, we are all of connected course. connected in a circle of love so that we can help and serve each other. That's what church is a uh -huh. community. But community um, it all together. sounds good now that I'm saying it at the time when I was doing it it was hard because five years and every Saturday five years, yes. Yeah. Every Saturday can you be for five years and yeah. many, many people have taken yeah. this course. Five years you give up your Saturday. Mm -hmm. So your Saturday morning, sir. Yeah. Every, but the every good Saturday. thing is that when you reach when we reach at at, at class, we were a small group of about ten, but then we came to be eight. Mm -hmm. And um the sharing, because different walks, different professions. You had yeah. teachers, you know, you had teachers, you had a nun in the group, Sister Chris, and then you had um, Abel, who was from the, um, what do you call that program that builds houses, hand in hand ministries. <laughs> and so we all bring our different experiences, our own challenges sure, of how, how to mm -hmm. grow beliefs and how to help others. It's, and, it's wonderful uh, when, yeah. when you have, it's not just you walking alone. And like Christ said, you were never meant to walk alone. Yeah, and it He's was encouraging. so interactive, you know. But again, the lots of papers that you have to write and you have to edit and 
when you get an A and an A minus is good, but one time I got a B minus and I don't like that. You don't so like it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's perfect. I've been happy with many B minuses <laughs> back in my days. <laughs> So, but it was a very fruitful course now that I look back. Now that you and, have, and where it's I taking see, you to it as yeah, well. That God is with us mm-hmm. in the thin and the good and in the bad. And that, right. we, just got, we just got to believe that, that and persevere is, in our there. faith. Mm-hmm. It's important. And that in the love that He has for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. okay, we're, we're winding now, down now on your life today. So, what yes. uh, you've retired, like you had mentioned. You uh-huh. worked, what, 25 years? Yeah. 25 seven years? Seven months. <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting? 25 years, seven months. Uh-huh. And so, what's your life like today? Okay, now I live in Leadville. Mm-hmm. Leadville is a small village. Um, actually, I had started the Legion of Mary in San Pedro mm-hmm. because we had it in Leadville. Okay. And it went dormant, but we are thinking of bringing it back okay. again because, but right now what we do, me and Miss Parshu and Vicky and Miss Callis, we still go visit on Tuesdays. Okay. They shut in and Miss Callis takes um, communion, uh-huh. you know, and we sing and we pray and try to encourage them. <laughs> then on Wednesdays, well, the south side is where most of our patients are. So on, like, I tie it in with the Bible study that I'm doing at Guadalupe Spiritual Life Center yeah. on Wednesdays. And then, so like from 1 to 3.30, I have been assigned a patient in Southside just to go and be there to sing and pray. Because she is this is a patient, a cancer patient. Uh-huh. Okay. She is um, mm-hmm. old, like in her 90s, but she likes to mm-hmm. sing. I guess when you reach that age, you are looking for God. You are yes. Christ- Christocentric at that time. Yes, so, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's to spend time with her. With them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then you so, have, of course, just your own daily devotions. Okay, so, so my, actually my day starts like 5 in the morning because... I've gotten into the routine of reading the Bible. So I would do like how the, the church calendar does it. I do an Old Testament reading and a psalm. And, but I've been, I'm up to Samuel uh-huh. and then the psalms. I've done it. I'm going over it again. Uh-huh. And I'm at Acts. But I'm, I, I like it mm-hmm. because it keeps me, it gives you that food, that daily food that, that we yes. need. You know, just how we need God's water and, yeah. and physical food. We need that. And then from... From the, uh, the devotion, the singing, the pray, prayer, prayer is important. Without that, can't life, go life is, um, is it goes yes. in the wrong direction. Other, others influence us. Uh-huh. We don't have Jesus in our life yeah. influencing us. Then the media yeah. takes over. Yeah. That that's where they're called. Yeah. Okay, and so like you said, you're still doing the uh, leftover from your sister that uh-huh. visiting the like, cancer patients. Yes. Yeah, so so it's, it's quite a bit of you. And, and I guess that's the reason that I retired my boss couldn't understand she said you can still go on she didn't accept it she didn't accept it very well but i said i don't i think i've reached my time here uh-huh. and i need to make space for new entrants and um, what my vocation is my calling is i tell her i think i missed my vocation actually if i tell you i, <laughs> yes. I, I, I said and um, she couldn't understand, understand that. she what wanted you me to stay and uh-huh. contribute more and i said no i think i belong in doing more Christ work, uh-huh. you know, do to be there for people. I think um, we reach um, different stages in our life when we need to hear you know, inside. And as older we get, mm. we, we, we understand uh-huh. that those who are listening to the promptings of the Spirit of exactly, inside, the so that we can find, so I can find that peace and that joy and that love. And then, otherwise, they're like it's a conflict inside. Inside, yes. there's a conflict, it's like, uh, and it's wrestling. not an, a, a good way. To, to live life. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Cecilia, thank you so much. We've come to the end. I'm not, you know, we could, we could continue on talking I could, really for another half an hour or so. But just with everything you've seen so far, you can understand why I pulled out that word of perseverance. You see Cecilia persevering from a little girl going to school. You know, just, I mean, like I I was telling her, many kids may have said, well, this is too much. I'll get out at primary school or I'll quit at high school and start working. Her father and mother who persevered in in what they were doing gave you that example on how to continue on. And now, once again, she's persevering in what she's doing in her spiritual walk, going on. Keep now it's all for Christ this time, yeah. not just for Cecilia. Yeah. It's more in following His path. That's so true. we usually say a prayer, and I think it's so appropriate. Cecilia's prayer is Saint Michael the Archangel, and it's because that's the prayer we pray to go into battle 
and daily we go into battle. So let's say that prayer together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who wander to the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Father, the name of the Son, Spirit. Amen. Amen. Cecilia, thank you so much for being on this show. Believe me, I'm sure there's others out there who may think this, may look now and see, well, maybe perseverance is not such a bad word after all, and maybe we should start teaching our kids perseverance. Yes, they can endure a little pain and persevere to get the things they want, not only in their physical life, but also a in spiritual a spiritual walk. life as well. So thanks, thank Cecilia, thank for being too. here with us. I also thank like you. to thank our cameraman, we have Lewis, Mark, who usually helps us out as well, and Tom Peterson, who allows us those wonderful evangelicals that you see on this show. Thank you, viewers, for being here with us. Continue showing up to see what we have to say and what message we give through testimonies from all the guests that I bring on this show. Lead me home. Oh, yeah. Remember, God loves you. God bless you. Thank you.